Oh yeah, I do. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I do. I want to introduce to you a man who has been one of my greatest supporters and benefactors for almost 20 years. This is a guy who, this is not of course one of his greatest accomplishments, but it's one of the things that endears him to me the most. Years ago, when my first really big selling book came out, 2004, I had the Politically Incorrect Guide to American History, I had a lot of attacks on me. How dare I say these things? The New York Times attacked me, the Boston Globe attacked me, certain fashionable libertarians attacked me, and the book kept on selling. Which was great, it's just like Ron Paul, you keep it, when the establishment attacks him, people get more curious about it. So it, was a, it totally backfired. But who stood by me and promoted me and supported me? But our next speaker, Lou Rockwell. He is truly a hero and a benefactor to the human race, and it is one of the great privileges of my life to call him a good friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Lou Rockwell. Great to be here, and I want to thank Deborah Robinette, and I know all the many, many people who put so much time into putting this program together. It's uh, it's it's an honor to be here and to be with you. I want to talk about Ron Paul and the future. One of the most thrilling memories of the 2012 campaign was the sight of all those huge crowds who came out to see Ron. His competition, meanwhile, couldn't fill half a Starbucks. <laughs> When I worked, as Tom mentioned, as Ron's chief of staff in the late 1970s and early 1980s, we could only have dreamt of such a result. Now, what was it that attracted all those people to Ron Paul? He didn't offer his followers a spot on the federal gravy train. He didn't pass some phony bill. In fact, he didn't do any of the things we associate with politicians. What his supporters love most about him has nothing to do with politics. Ron Paul is the anti-politician. He tells unfashionable truths. He educates rather than flatters the public. And he stands up for principle even when the whole world is arrayed against him. Now some people say, well I love Ron Paul except for his foreign policy. But that foreign policy reflects the best and the most heroic part of who Ron Paul is. Peace is the linchpin of the Ron Paul program, not an extraneous or dispensable adjunct to it. He would never and could never abandon it. Here was the issue, however, that Ron could have avoided had he, been, had he cared only for personal advancement. But he refused, no matter how many times he's been urged to keep his mouth shut about war and empire, these have remained the centerpieces of his speeches and his interviews. Of course, Ron Paul deserves the Nobel Peace Prize. In a just world, he would also have won the Medal of Freedom and all the honors, and all the honors for which a man in his position is eligible. But history is littered with forgotten politicians who earn piles of awards awarded by other politicians. What matters to Ron more than all the honors and the ceremonies in the world is all of you and your commitment to the immortal ideas he has championed all his life. It's Ron's truth-telling and his urge to educate the public that should inspire us as we carry on this fight into the future. It isn't a coincidence that governments everywhere want to educate children. Government education, in turn, is supposed to be evidence of the state's goodness, its concern for our well-being. The real, of course, the real situation is less flattering. If the government's propaganda can take root as children grow up, these kids will be no threat to the state apparatus. 
Indeed, they'll fasten the chains to their own ankles. H.L. Mencken once said that the state doesn't just want to make you obey, it wants to make you want to obey. And that's one thing the government schools do so well. A long forgotten political thinker, Eddie and Delabuetti, wondered why people would ever tolerate an oppressive regime. After all, the people who were governed vastly outnumber the small minority of governors. So the people governed could have put a stop to it all if only they had the will to do so, and yet they rarely do. Delabuetti concluded that the only way any regime could survive was if the public consented to it. That consent could range all the way from enthusiastic support to stoic resignation. But if that consent were ever to, be, to, were ever to vanish, a regime's days would be numbered. And that's why education, real education, is such a threat to any regime. If the state loses its grip over your mind, it loses the key to its very survival. The state is beginning to lose that grip. Traditional media, which have carried the water for the government since time began, it seems, are threatened by independent voices on the internet. I don't think anyone under 25 even reads a newspaper anymore. The media and the political class joined forces to make sure we never found out about Ron Paul. When that proved impossible, they smeared him. And when no one, and, you, and excuse me, and told you that no one would want to go to hear Ron Paul when after all they could hear Tim Pawlenty or Mitt Romney. All this backfired. The more they panicked about Ron, the more drawn to him people were. They wanted to know, what exactly is it that the establishment is so eager to keep us from hearing? Ours is the most radical challenge to the state ever posed. We are trying to make the state more efficient, or show it how it can bring in more revenue, or change the pattern of its wealth redistribution. We're not saying that this subsidy is better than that subsidy, or that this kind of tax would make the system run more smoothly than that one. We reject the existing system root and branch. oppose all the state's wars because they're counterproductive or overextend the state's forces. We oppose them because mass murder based on lies can never be morally acceptable. We don't beg for scraps from the imperial table. We don't, we don't seek a seat at that table. We want to knock the table over. We have much work to do. Countless Americans are persuaded that it's in their interest to be looted and ordered around by a ruling elite that in fact cares nothing for their welfare and only to increase its power and wealth at their expense. The most lethal and antisocial institution in history has gotten away with describing itself as the very source of civilization. From the moment they set foot in the government schools, Americans learn that the state is there to rescue them from poverty, unsafe medicine and rainy days, to provide economic stimulus when the economy is poor, and to keep them secure from shadowy figures everywhere. This view is reinforced, of course, by the broadcast and print media. If the public 
has been bamboozled, as Murray Rothbard said. It's up to us to do the de-bamboozling. And that means we need to tear the benign mask off the ugly face of the state. That is the task before you, before all of us here today. Begin with yourself. Learn everything you can about a free society. Read the greats, Frederick Bastiat, Louis van Mises, Murray Rothbard. As you delve into the literature of liberty, share what you're reading and learning. Start a blog, create a YouTube channel, organize a reading group, but whatever you do, learn, spread what you're learning, and never stop. If it is through propaganda that people thoughtlessly accept the claims of the state, then it is through education that people must be brought to their senses. With the kept media on the wane, it's going to be more and more difficult for the state to make its claims stick, to persuade people to keep accepting its lies and propaganda. You've heard it said that the pen is mightier than the sword. Think of the sword as the state. Think of the pen as all of you, each in your own way, spreading the ideas of liberty. Remember that insight of Etienne de la Boite. All government rests on public consent, and as soon as the public withdraws that consent, any regime is doomed. That's why they fear Iran, that's why they fear us, and it's why despite all the horrors we read about every day, we may dare to look to the future with hope. Thank you.